Here's everything you need to know about the 11th house in traditional astrology. The 11th house is called the good daimon or the good spirit. And this is because from a Kabbalistic perspective, the 11th house is representing the house of our holy guardian angel, which is lovely <laughs> because who doesn't like their holy guardian angel? The 11th house, as we know within traditional astrology, is the house of our friends. But it's also the house of divine providence that shines upon our lives and the people who represent sources of sustenance and providence within our daily affairs. So the ancients held that when a person had Jupiter, for example, in their 11th house, this could indicate that that person had rich friends, or it can indicate that that person had friends on high who had that person's best interest at heart. This is one of the reasons why Jupiter is having his terrestrial house of joy in the 11th house, because it represents the goodwill that comes from not only spiritual entities that have our best intentions at heart, but it also represents the goodwill of physical people within our lives who also hold our best interest at heart. The 11th house being the second house from our 10th house is representing the house of the wealth, not only the wealth of our mother, but it's also representing the house of the wealth that we inherit from our job or from our boss in general. So if you want to see what your salary potential is going to be like in this lifetime, then assessing the 11th house, the ruler of the 11th house, and aspects to the ruler of the 11th house will all be indicative of the sort of salary you can hope to attain from your job, which is quite different from the money that you independently hold in your second house. Some people could be rich by nature because they're born into a family of wealth and therefore they inherit wealth, but they might have a job that pays very little. Conversely, some people may have a job that pays very much, but still they're broke in their second house as a result of their own poor money management abilities. So these are some of the things that we find when assessing the 11th house. Like I said earlier, the 11th house is the house of the terrestrial joy of Jupiter. However, when we apply the Chaldean order to the 12 houses, we end up with the sun corresponding with the 11th house. And this is also meant to be an indication of the sort of super sufficiency that we derive from the 11th house when the 11th house is truly working well. The reason why the sun is having his terrestrial house of joy in the 11th house is for much the same reason why the fool card within the Kabbalistic tarot is associated with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph. Because Aleph and the fool card on the Kabbalistic tree of life is connecting the second most highest sphere of God's emanation to the uppermost sphere of God's emanation. And that is meant to symbolize the fact that the fool is eternally in the morning of his life. The fool is eternally reaching upward to the highest height that he can attain. The fool is a symbol of the evergreen nature of youth and of the old and the undying gods because the fool's only purpose within this lifetime is to ascend from the 11th house, essentially, to the 10th house. This is also something that we find in the 11th house as well. When the sun is placed there, there can be a sense of the sun himself being eternally in the morning of his life. Therefore, the sun in the 11th house has the ability to be a continuous source of the generation of well-being within our chart, especially if the sun is doing particularly well within the 11th house to begin with. The 11th house is representing our friends, our associates, our colleagues. And very often when we find the rule of the 11th house in the 7th house or the rule of the 7th house in the 11th house, it can represent that we have a spouse that we met from within our circle of friends. And even if that relationship doesn't last, that spouse ends up becoming a friend or the friend ends up becoming a spouse because that's just how these two houses tend to work together. One of the things that I learned about the 11th house when I was studying Geotish is that the 11th house represents the fulfillment of our desires. And this language is something that my students are very accustomed to hearing me say in relation to the 11th house, 
but it isn't something that we find within a traditional Western astrology perspective. This is a description of the 11th house that I've borrowed from Geotish because I think that it is a very apt description of what occurs for us in the 11th house. The 11th house is representing the fulfillment of our desires, which is why from a traditional Western perspective, we consider it the house of our hopes, our dreams, and our aspirations as well. Planets that have a natural analogous relationship with the 11th house are going to be the natural benefics in the forms of Venus and Jupiter, because Venus and Jupiter are signifying wealth and abundance in general, and these planets here can bode well for us as far as wealth and abundance from our chosen line of work. The Moon and Mercury also do well within the 11th house. The Moon, really because she just represents people in general, and when we have the Moon in the 11th house, this can represent us being a part of a community of friends who feel like our family, because the Moon also has to do with the establishment of the principle of the family within our lives. Mercury simply has to do with how we exchange information. And when we have Mercury in the 11th house, it can be indicative of us having a vast circle of friends with whom we find ourselves in constant discussion and dialogue. Planets that don't have a natural analogy with the 11th house are Saturn, because Saturn doesn't really have a natural analogy with any good house that we like. So Saturn in the 11th could represent a restriction of friends within this lifetime. They could also represent that we don't feel ourselves being paid as much as we should be paid from our jobs. And therefore, the 11th house could represent a very real source of karmic heavy lifting for us within this lifetime. Mars in the 11th house could represent that we have a contentious relationship with our friends in general, and therefore, we don't really like Mars in the 11th house because it has more to do with the rupture and the severances that might happen between friends, more so than it has to do with the establishment of a healthy and thriving friend circle. I don't really have much to say about Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto in the 11th house, with the exception that Uranus in the 11th house could indicate a person who makes friends quickly but also loses friends quickly, which is also the truth if we have Uranus conjunct the Ascendant, conjunct the 4th house, or conjunct the 10th house as well. North Node in the 11th house could represent that we benefit and we prosper within this lifetime from our friends. However, the challenge with having the North Node in the 11th house is that it places the South Node within the 5th house, which is something that we're oftentimes finding within the charts of women who have various challenges in terms of childbirth within this lifetime or who have challenging relationships with the children that they do have. South Node in the 11th house, conversely, is far better for the proliferation of children because that places the North Node in the 5th house, but it's also a challenge as far as us establishing a very genuine circle of friends is concerned, especially if the rule of the 11th house is otherwise afflicted within our chart, and it can also represent some sense of financial deficit from the maternal side of our family, as well as a sense of financial lack in terms of the monies that we find ourselves making from our careers in general.